Hi, my name is Clé Michel, not Umi La Rosa. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, press the like button. Let's play ball. Now the other thing you want to look at though is where, do the, where does the ball go? Here are the worst trades in the Major League Baseball history. In 1919, the Boston Red Sox sold Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees at the price of $100,000. Once an excellent pitcher, Babe Ruth helped the Boston Red Sox win two of the three World Series he was in. He also started to become a powerful slugger. Harry Frazee, the Boston Red Sox owner, needed money to finance a play. Frazee also needed money to pay the Fenway Park Montgage. After the trade, Babe Ruth led 10 times the American League in home runs. Ruth also won four World Series. Meanwhile, the Boston Red Sox didn't reach the World Series until 1946, and didn't win the series until 2004. Babe Ruth is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1936. In 1964, the Chicago Cubs traded Lou Brock, Jack Spring, and Paul Toth to the St. Louis Cardinals for Ernie Brolio, Doug Clemens and Bobby Shantz. Lou Brock of the Chicago Cubs possessed great speed and was capable of stealing a lot of bases. However, the Cubs struggled to develop him correctly. Ernie Brolio of the Cardinals was a good pitcher. Brolio won 21 games in 1960. In 1963, he had a record of 18 wins and 8 loss with a 2.99 ERA. After the trade, Lou Brock stole 888 bases in 15 seasons and a half with the Redbirds. He won two World Series. Ernie Brolio only won seven games with a 5.40 ERA in two season and a half with the Cubs. Brolio's arm was finished. Lou Brock is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1985. In 1965, the Cincinnati Reds traded Frank Robinson to the Baltimore Orioles for Jack Balls Chun, Milt Pappas and Dick Simpson. Frank Robinson smashed 324 home runs with the Cincinnati Reds. He was named Rookie of the Year in 1956 and MVP of the National League in 1961. He won the Gold Glove in 1958 as an outfielder. Milt Pappas won 110 games with a 3.24 ERA in nine years with the Orioles. According to Cincinnati Reds owner Bill DeWitt, he traded Robinson to the Orioles because he was not a young 30. Robinson had a dream season in 1966. He hit for 316, smashed 49 home runs and drove 122 runs. He won the World Series and was named MVP of the American League. He won another World Series in 1970. Milt Pappas was a bust with the Reds. Before being traded to the Atlanta Braves in 1968, he had a record of 30 wins and 29 loss with a 4.04 ERA. Frank Robinson is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1982. In 1971, the New York Mets traded Nolan Ryan, Frank Estrada, Don Rose, and Leroy Stanton to the California Angels for Jim Fergosi. With the New York Mets, Nolan Ryan is sometimes used as a spot starter, sometimes used as reliever. In five seasons, he held a 3.58 ERA. Jim Fergosi was a star with the Angels, having won the Gold Glove as a shortstop in 1967. After the trade, Nolan Ryan pitched four no-hitters with the Angels. In eight years, the Ryan Express won 138 games with a 3.07 era, 2,181 innings pitched, and 2,416 strikeouts. Jim Fergosi only hit for 233 in 146 games with the Mets. He later managed Ryan during the Ryan's last two seasons. Nolan Ryan is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 1999. In 1982, the Philadelphia Phillies traded Ryan Sandberg and Larry Bow to the Chicago Cubs for Ivan de Jesus. In his first season in the MLB, Ryan Sandberg was only one for six in 13 games with the Phillies. His only hit occurred at Wrigley Field using a bat borrowed from starting shortstop Larry Bauer. The Phillies had no room for Sandberg. The second base was occupied by Manny Trillo and the third base, by Mike Schmidt. The Phillies refused to give a contract extension to Larry Bauer and was looking to trade him. However, they do not want to include Sandberg to the trade. The Cubs insisted to have him. After the trade, 
New shortstop Ivan de Jesus helped the Phillies reach the World Series in 1983. After the 1988 season, he was out of baseball. Between 1983 to 1993, Ryan Sandberg won nine gold gloves, seven silver sluggers and the MVP title in 1984. He is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2005. In 1987, the Detroit Tigers traded John Smoltz to the Atlanta Braves for Doyle Alexander. John Smoltz is born in Detroit and was a Tigers prospect. At the time, the Tigers were looking to make the playoffs. The veteran Doyle Alexander had a record of 25 wins and 27 loss with a 4.09 ERA with the Braves. At the time, the Braves sucked. After the trade, Doyle Alexander successfully helped the Tigers reach the American League Championship Series. He retired after the 1989 season. In 20 years with the Braves, John Smoltz won 210 games, save 154 games, held a 3.26 ERA, pitched 3,395 innings and struck out 3,011 batters. Smoltz won the World Series in 1995, the Cy Young Award in 1996 and the Silver Slugger Award in 1997. He is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2015. In 1988, the New York Yankees traded J.B. Una, Rich Balaban, and a player to be named later to the Seattle Mariners for Ken Phelps. New York sent Troy Evers to Seattle to complete a deal. Ken Phelps is born in Seattle and was an average Seattle Mariners player capable of hitting at least 20 home runs per year. J.B. Yunner was a New York Yankees prospect. In 1987, while playing for the Columbus Clippers, B. Yuna hit 31 home runs and drove 85 runs. All New York Yankees George Steinbrenner wanted is Ken Phelps. After the trade, the Yankees struggled to find a place for Phelps. Since he was a first baseman, his place was already taken by Don Mattingly. The Yankees also had a designated hitter in Jack Clark. In 131 games, Phelps only hit for 240. His career went downhill because of it. On the other hand, J.B. Yuna hit 310 home runs and drove 965 runs in 15 years with the Mariners. He won the Gold Glove as an outfielder in 1996. The trade was mentioned in an episode of Seinfeld. In 1989, the Montreal Expos traded Randy Johnson, Gene Harris, and Brian Holman to the Seattle Mariners for Mark Langston and a player to be named later. Seattle sent Mike Campbell to Montreal to complete the deal. During the 1989 season, Randy Johnson was a Montreal Expos prospect and Mark Langston was the best pitcher of the Mariners. Unlike the Mariners, the Expos had a good team and wanted to make the playoffs. After the trade, Mark Langston, in his lone season with Montreal, finished the season with 12 wins, 9 loss and a 2.39 ERA in 24 starts. Unfortunately, the Expos choked and missed the playoffs. As for the big unit, in 274 games with the Mariners, Johnson had 130 wins, 74 loss, an ERA of 3.42, 51 complete games, 19 shutouts, 1,838 innings pitched and one-third, and 2,162 strikeouts. He won the Cy Young Awards in 1995. He is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2015. In 1990, the Boston Red Sox traded Jeff Bagwell to the Houston Astros for Larry Anderson. Third baseman Jeff Bagwell was a Boston Red Sox prospect. Because the corners were occupied by Wade Boggs and Mo Vaughn, the team had no room for Bagwell. Also, the Red Sox were betting on prospects Stim Nairing and Scott Cooper. At the middle of the season, the Red Sox needed help in the bullpen. Larry Anderson, an excellent relief pitcher for the Astros is the one Boston is looking for. In 15 games, Larry Anderson held a 1.23 ERA. He successfully helped the Red Sox reach the American League Championship. He left the team after the season. As for Jeff Bagwell, he was converted into a first baseman and spent his entire career with the Astros. He hit for 297, smashed 449 homers and drove 1,529 runs. Tim Nairing and Scott Cooper are out of baseball since 1997. 
Jeff Bagwell is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2017. In 1991, the Houston Astros traded Kenny Lofton and Dave Rode to the Cleveland Indians for Willie Blair and Eddie Taubensi. Center fielder Kenny Lofton was a Houston Astros prospect. With the Tucson Toros, in the AAA level, he hit 17 triples and stole 40 bases with a batting average of 308. His position in the MLB was occupied by Steve Finley. Eddie Taubensi had just started his career with the Indians and Willie Blair had a two wins, three loss record with a 6.75 ERA. After the trade, Eddie Taubensi only hit for 234 in 203 games with the Astros. Willie Blair had a 5-7 record with a 4 ERA in 29 games with the Astros in 1991. During his first stint with the Tribe, Kenny Lofton hit 42 triples and stole 425 bases. He helped Cleveland reach the playoffs two in a row and won four gold gloves. Kenny Lofton once said, I know they gave up on me and now I'm glad they did. One man's trash is another man's treasure. In 1993, the Los Angeles Dodgers traded Pedro Martinez to the Montreal Expos for Deline Hoda Shields. Ramon Martinez knew his brother Pedro is a better starting pitcher than him. Not Tommy Lasorda. The Los Angeles Dodgers manager thought Pedro was too small to be as successful in the MLB and used him almost exclusively as a relief pitcher. Deline and Oda Shields, the Montreal Expos second baseman, hit for 277 and stole 187 bases in his four first seasons. After the 1993 season, the Dodgers needed a second baseman. After the trade, the Shields only hit for 241 and stole 114 bases with the Dodgers in three years. His last season in L.A. is his worst in his career, in 154 games, his batting average was 224, his on-base percentage was 288 and his slugging percentage was 545. Unlike Tommy Lasorda, Montreal Expos Felipe Alou used Pedro Martinez exclusively as a starting pitcher. Pedro's only relief appearance happened in 1994. That year, he almost reached the playoffs. Unfortunately, the rest of the season was cancelled due to the 1994 strike. Pedro had a dream season in 1997, he had a 17-8 win-loss record, 1.90 ERA, 13 complete games, 4 shutouts, 241 innings pitched and one third and 305 strikeouts. He became the only Expo to win the Cy Young Award. In 1994, the Minnesota Twins sold Dave Winfield to the Cleveland Indians. Born in St. Paul, Minnesota, Dave Winfield's career is about to end. After winning the 1992 World Series with the Toronto Blue Jays, Winfield signed with the Minnesota Twins. During the 1994 strike, the Twins concluded a deal with the Indians. Dave Winfield for a player to be named later. At the time, Winfield had an average of 284, 463 home runs, 1,829 runs batted in and 222 stolen bases in his career. Because no player could be named, to settle the trade, Cleveland and Minnesota executives went to dinner, with the Indians picking up the tab. The season was eventually cancelled. For the next season, Dave Winfield returned with the Indians as a free agent. He is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2001. In 1995, the Toronto Blue Jays traded David Cohn to the New York Yankees for Mike Gordon, Jason Jarvis and Marty Jansen. The Blue Jays reacquired David Cohn from the Kansas City Royals. This was Cohn's second stint with the team. During the season, he had a 9 wins and 6 loss record with a 3.38 ERA. Unfortunately, the 1995 season was a disaster for the Blue Jays. This led the team to be sellers at the middle of the season. After the trade, David Cohn won four World Series with the Yankees. His best year was in 1998. He had a 20 wins and 7 loss record, a 3.55 ERA, 207 innings pitched and two-third, and 209 strikeouts in 31 starts. With the exception of the 2000 season, his last year with the Yankees, Cohn's ERA was never above four. Mike Gordon and Jason Jarvis never played in the MLB. 
and Marty Jansen made his debut in 1996. Before being drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks after the 1997 season, he had a 6 win 7 loss record with a 6.39 ERA in 27 games with the Blue Jays. In short, the Blue Jays traded David Cohn for peanuts. In 1997, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays traded Bobby Haberu to the Philadelphia Phillies for Kevin Stocker. With the Phillies, Kevin Stocker wasn't anything special. Neither was Bobby Abreu of the Astros. In fact, Abreu never hit more than 16 home runs in the minors. One day, the 1997 Major League Baseball expansion draft took place, and the Astros chose not to protect Abreu. The latter is drafted by the Devil Rays. Hours later, the trade is made. In almost nine seasons with the Phillies, Bobby Abreu held a 303 batting average, hit 195 home runs, drove 814 runs, and stole 254 bases. He won the 2004 Silver Slugger Award and the 2005 Gold Glove as an outfielder. Kevin Stocker was released by the Devil Rays at the end of May 2000. He finished the remainder of the season with the Anaheim Angels. He only hit for 197 in Anaheim and was out of baseball ever since. The Tampa Bay Baseball Club never had a winning season until the team dropped the word devil from the name. In 1997, the Montreal Expos traded Pedro Martinez to the Boston Red Sox for Carl Pavano and a player to be named later. Boston sent Tony Armas Jr. to Montreal to complete the deal. The 1997 season was disappointing for the Montreal Expos. Not for Pedro Martinez, the best pitcher of the team. How did he take part of his second All-Star game and win a Cy Young Award? By having a 17 wins and 8 loss record, with a 1.90 ERA, 13 complete games, 4 shutouts, and 305 strikeouts in 31 starts. Once the trade is made, Pedro Martinez became the best pitcher of the Red Sox. In 7 years with the team, he had a 117 wins 37 loss record, a 2.52 ERA, 22 complete games, 8 shutouts et 1,683 strikeouts. He won the 2004 World Series and two more Cy Young Awards. He took part of four All-Star games. Meanwhile in Montreal, starting pitchers Carl Pavano and Tony Armas were average and forgettable, making them busts. Pedro Martinez is inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2015. In 1997, the Oakland Athletics traded Mark McGuire to the St. Louis Cardinals for Eric Ludwig, T.J. Matthews and Blake Stein. In 1987, after hitting for 289, smashing 49 homers et droving 118 runs, Mark McGuire is named Rookie of the Year. Big Mac also won the 1989 World Series one gold glove and three silver slugger awards. Before the trade, he hit 363 home runs, drove 941 runs and walked 847 times in his career. The athletics sucked in 1997. Once the transaction is made, Eric Ludwig and Blake Stein were so bad, the team quickly traded them away. TJ Matthews was so bad in his last two seasons, in 2000 and 2001 that the team released him at the middle of the season. Matthews finished the year in St. Louis, making McGuire his teammate. Speaking of Mark McGuire, he broke Roger Maris's single-season home run record with 70 in 1998. Next season, he hit 65 home runs. During that period, he had driven 147 runs two seasons in a row. In his last two seasons of his career, McGuire helped the Cardinals make the playoffs. Never, ever, ever trade a slugger like Mark McGuire for bullpen trash. In 1997, the Boston Red Sox traded Heathcliff Slocum to the Seattle Mariners for Derek Lowe and Jason Varitek. Derek Lowe and Jason Varitek were Seattle Mariners prospects. Unlike Varitek, Derek Lowe made his debut in the 1997 season. In 12 games, he had a 2 wins 4 loss record and a 6.96 ERA. At the time, the Mariners were in a playoffs race. Before 1997, Heathcliff Slocum used to be a good relief pitcher. Before the trade, he had a 0-5 record with a 5.79 ERA. 
After the trade, the Mariners managed to reach the American League Division Series despite having Slocum. Whatever is the season or the postseason, Slocum never won a single game in 1997. In the next year, he posted a 2-5 record with a 5.32 ERA. In 2004, Derek Lowe and Jason Varitak both win the World Series with the Red Sox. In the next year, Varitak is named captain of the team. This is how the Mariners helped the Red Sox break the curse of the Bambino. In 1999, the Texas Rangers traded Juan Gonzalez, Danny Patterson, and Greg Zahn to the Detroit Tigers for Frank Catalanato, Francisco Cordero, Bill Hasselman, Gabe Kapler, Justin Thompson and Alan Webb. The deal was made before the 2000 season. Detroit Tigers general manager Randy Smith wanted so bad to have the slugger Juan Gonzalez on his team. After the trade, he offered Gonzalez an 8-year, $140 million contract. Gonzalez's answer is, no. The reason why is because of the distance between the fences and the home plate. The brand new Comerica Park is a pitcher-friendly stadium. The left center field fence alone stood nearly 400 feet from home plate. You cannot bring a home run hitter in a pitcher-friendly stadium and expect him to hit 50 home runs. This is insane. Before the trade deadline, Smith tried to trade Gonzalez to the Yankees for outfielder Ricky Letty and two minor leaguers. The outfielder made it clear that he didn't want to play in New York. After missing the last weeks of the 2000 season, Gonzalez left the Tigers as a free agent. He returned to the Texas Rangers organization before the 2002 season. Of all the players Detroit gave, only Alan Webb didn't make to the MLB. I can't believe the Detroit Tigers are stupid enough to waste the farm system for a one-year rental. In 2000, the Toronto Blue Jays traded Michael Young and Darwin Kobe Yan to the Texas Rangers for Esteban Loiza. Michael Young was a Toronto Blue Jays prospect. At the time, as the entire infield is occupied, the Jays had no room for him. Darwin Kobe Yan, with his 8.07 ERA in seven games, was awful. When Roy Halladay was struggling, the Blue Jays sent him back to the minors. Hence the acquisition of starting pitcher Esteban Loiza from the Rangers. As a Blue Jays, with a 25 wins 28 loss record and a 4.96 ERA, Loiza was bad. After the 2002 season, he signed with the White Sox. His first season with his new team was a wonderful one. He had 21 wins 9 loss record with a 2.90 ERA in 34 starts. Fortunately for the Blue Jays, the 2003 Cy Young went to Roy Halladay. The good news for the Blue Jays is that Darwin Kubian is so bad with the Rangers, he had a 10.7 ERA, that the team quickly traded him to the Montreal Expos. The bad news is that Michael Young spent his 14 first years of his career with the Rangers. He took part of seven All-Star games and won a gold glove as a shortstop in 2008. Had Michael Young not been as talented as he was, the trade would have been fair. In 2001, the Toronto Blue Jays traded David Wells and Matt DeWitt to the Chicago White Sox for Mike Soraka, Michael Williams, Kevin Bierne, and Brian Simmons. In his first stint with the Blue Jays, David Wells won the 1992 World Series. In his second stint, Despite winning 37 games in two years, Wells was a rather average starting pitcher. As for Mike Soraka, he spent his entire career with the White Sox at the time. His 2000 season was the best of his career. In 32 starts, Soraka had a 15 wins 10 loss record with a 3.79 ERA. Since Wells wanted to leave the Jays, a trade had to be made. After the trade, Blue Jays found out that Soraka had a shoulder injury. The Toronto Blue Jays general manager Gord Ash appealed the trade to MLB commissioner Bud Selig, but Selig refused to overturn the trade. Soraka's injury was so serious that he never pitched in a baseball game ever again. David Wells's 2001 season was disappointing. But at least, he did pitch for the White Sox. In 2002, the Cleveland Indians traded Bartolo Colon and Tim Drew to the Montreal Expos for Cliff Lee, Brandon Phillips, Grady Sizemore, and Lee Stevens. With the MLB as their owner, the Montreal Expos' future was uncertain. At the middle of the 2002 season, the Cleveland Indians, 
with a 36 wins 41 loss record, was about to have a losing season for the first time since 1994. The Tribe were sellers and the Expos thought they have a chance to make the playoffs. Once the trade is made, Bartolo Colon had 10 wins 4 loss record with a 3.31 ERA. In the spite of his wonderful performance, the Expos missed the playoffs. The young players the Indians received all found success in the MLB. Cliff Lee won the Cy Young Award in 2008. Brandon Phillips, traded by the Indians, won four Gold Glove and one Silver Slugger Award with the Reds. And Grady Sizemore won two Gold Glove and one Silver Slugger Award with Cleveland. The already bad trade by the Expos was made worse by another one with the White Sox after the 2002 season. In 2003, the Chicago White Sox traded Orlando Hernandez, Rocky Biddle, and Jeff Leifer to the Montreal Expos for Bartolo Colon and Jorge Nunez. After finishing the 2002 season in second place of the National League East Division with 83 wins and 79 loss, the Expos wanted to trade Bartolo Colon for a cheaper starting pitcher. Orlando Hernandez was an average starting pitcher for the Yankees. In the five first years of his career, he had a 53 wins 38 loss record with a 4.04 ERA. The Yankees traded him to the White Sox. Shortly after, Hernandez was dealt to the Expos. Unfortunately for Montreal, Orlando Hernando had a rotator cuff injury. Because surgery was required, Hernandez missed the entire 2003 season. The Expos ended up in the fourth place with the exact same record in the previous year. Rocky Biddle and Jeff Leifer were both awful. Meanwhile, Bartolo Colon had a good season with the White Sox. He had a record of 15 wins 13 loss with a 3.87 in 34 games. After they gave too much for Bartolo Colon, the Expos traded him for peanuts. In 2003, the Atlanta Braves traded Adam Wainwright, Ray King, and Jason Marquis to the St. Louis Cardinals for J.D. Drew and Eli Marrero. J.D. Drew was once a talented baseball player. However, in addition of landing on the disabled list every season he played in St. Louis, J.D.'s passion for the game is questionable. St. Louis Cardinals manager Tony La Russa doesn't like him. La Russa tells Buzz Bissinger, author of the book Three Nights in August that it seems Drew had decided to settle for 75% of his talent, in large part because of his enormous contract. After the trade, J.D. had a good season with the Braves. He hit for 305, smashed 31 home runs and drove 93 runs. Once he was granted free agency, he signed with the Dodgers. In the deal, the Atlanta Braves lost two good starting pitchers in Jason Marquis and Adam Wainwright, and one good relief pitcher in Ray King. Adam Wainwright is still with the Cardinals as an active player. In 2003, the Minnesota Twins traded A.J. Pierzynski to the San Francisco Giants for Buff Bonser, Francisco Liriano, and Joe Nathan. A.J. Pierzynski was a good catcher with the Twins. He started his career in 1998 and played regularly behind the plate in 2001. He took part of his first All-Star game in 2002. In his last season in Minnesota in 2003, he hit 11 home runs and drove 74 runs with a batting average of 312. His lone season in San Francisco is okay. His average, lower than last year, was at 272. He hit 11 home runs and drove 77 runs. AJ has developed a reputation of being clubhouse cancer. He signed with the White Sox in 2005. Of the players the Giants gave, the inconsistent Francisco Liriano managed to have three good seasons with the Twins, and Joe Nathan saved 260 games with the Twins between 2004 and 2011. About AJ Pierzynski, White Sox manager Ozzie Guillen once said, if you play against him, you hate him. If you play with him, you hate him a little less. No wonder why the Giants hate Pierzynski. In 2003, the Pittsburgh Pirates traded Aramis Ramirez, Kenny Lofton, and Cash to the Chicago Cubs for Matt Brubach, Jose Hernandez and a player to be named later. Chicago sent Bobby Hill to Pittsburgh to complete the deal. At his first season as a starter in 2001, Aramis Ramirez hit for 300 smashed 34 home runs and drove 112 runs. His next season was disappointing. 
his average dropped in 234. He only hit 18 homers and drove 71 runs. As for Kenny Lofton, his best days were behind him. Unlike Ramirez, Jose Hernandez of the Cubs never had a 100 RBI season and had 7 100 strikeout season. Ramirez's career high in strikeout was 102,001. So after the deal, the Cubs reached the National League Championship Series. During the season, Kenny Lofton stole 12 bases in 56 games as a Cub. In eight seasons and a half, Aramis Ramirez held a 294 batting average, hit 239 home runs and drove 806 runs. In 58 games as a Pirates in 2003, Jose Hernandez only hit for 223. Matt Brubach never played a game in the MLB and Bobby Hill has done nothing important for the Pirates. The perfect example of how to make a successfully bad trade. In 2004, the New York Mets traded Scott Casimir and Jose Diaz to the Tampa Bay Devil Rays for Bartolome Fortunato and Victor Zambrano. Victor Zambrano was an average starting pitcher with the Devil Rays. His ERA is always higher than 3. At the time of the trade, the New York Mets had a record of 49 wins and 52 loss. They were at 6 games from a playoff spot. General Manager Jim Duquette thought he had a chance to make the playoffs and decided to trade prospect Scott Casimir for Zambrano. After the trade, the Mets missed the playoffs. Jim Duquette was reassigned shortly before the end of the season. The Mets ended up in the fourth place of the National League East Division with 71 wins and 91 loss. Until he was granted free agency after the 2006 season, Victor Zambrano's performance with the Mets continually deteriorated. As for Scott Casimir, between 2005 to 2008, he had a 45 wins and 34 loss record with a 3.51 ERA with a race. Still active today, Casimir is now playing for the San Francisco Giants organization. In 2007, the Florida Marlins traded Miguel Cabrera and Dontrell Willis to the Detroit Tigers for Dallas Trahern, Burt Badenhop, Frankie De La Cruz, Cameron Mabin, Andrew Miller, and Mike Rabelo. In the first five years of his career with the Marlins, Miguel Cabrera hit for 313, smashed 138 home runs and drove 523 runs. He won two Silver Slugger awards and the 2003 World Series. In 2007, the Marlins finished in the last place of the National League East Division with 71 wins and 91 loss. As for the Detroit Tigers, a competitive team at the time, they were ready to improve. After the trade, Miguel Cabrera spent the remainder of his career with the Detroit Tigers. He won two MVP titles and five Silver Slugger awards. He continually made the playoffs with the Tigers between 2011 and 2014. In 2021, he had recently hit his 500th home run of his career. Of the players the Marlins got, only Cameron Maven and Andrew Miller are still active in the MLB. Miami didn't return to the playoffs until 2020. In 2008, the Pittsburgh Pirates traded Jose Bautista to the Toronto Blue Jays for a player to be named later. Toronto sent Robinson Diaz to Pittsburgh to complete the deal. Before being traded to the Blue Jays, Jose Bautista has switched teams five times. He didn't play regularly until 2006. As a Pirate, he was an average player who never hit more than 16 home runs. As for Robinson Diaz, he only had a cup of tea with the Jays in 2008. In 2010, Jose Bautista beat the franchise record for home runs with 54. Between 2010 to 2015, Joey Bats hit 227 homers and drove 582 runs with a batting average of 268. He was selected for six All-Star games. He won two Hank Aaron Awards and three Silver Slugger Awards. He made the playoffs in 2015 and 2016. As for Robinson Diaz, despite having a career batting average of 281, he only played 43 games with the Pirates between 2008 and 2009. The Toronto Blue Jays knew how to trade nothing for something as important than Jose Bautista. What a steal! In 2009, the Toronto Blue Jays traded Roy Halladay and Cash to the Philadelphia Phillies for Travis Darno, Kyle Drabic, and Michael Taylor. 
in 12 years with the Blue Jays. Starting pitcher Roy Halladay held a 148 wins and 76 loss record and a 3.38 ERA. 2003 was his best season of his career. He had a 22 wins and 7 loss record with a 3.25 ERA, 266 innings pitched and 36 starts. Unfortunately, the Blue Jays never made the playoffs. Prior to the trade, the Phillies won the 2008 World Series at their last three postseasons. They have a promising prospect in Kyle Drebeck, the son of Doug Drebeck. After the trade, Roy Halladay won the 2010 Cy Young Award in his first year with the Phillies. He had a 21 wins and 10 loss record, a 2.44 ERA and 250 innings pitched and two-thirds and 33 starts. He made the playoffs in his two first seasons. Meanwhile, Kyle Drebeck was a huge bust with the Blue Jays. Before being claimed of waivers by the White Sox in 2015, Drebeck had a 5.27 ERA in 39 games. Sadly, Roy Halladay was killed in a plane crash on November 7, 2017. He was 40. He is posthumously inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2019. In 2010, the Oakland Athletics traded Rajay Davis to the Toronto Blue Jays for Danny Farquhar and Tristan Magnuson. The Athletics and the Blue Jays both played yo-yo with Danny Farquhar and Tristan Magnuson. After the Rajay Davis deal, the A's traded Farquhar back to Toronto only to claim him off waivers. As for Magnuson, after almost a year with Oakland, the Jays purchased him. In Toronto, Rajay Davis stole 125 bases in three years. You know a trade is bad when a player come back to his former team shortly after it. The Jays traded two yo-yos for a base stealer. So they knew they made a good deal. In 2012, the Toronto Blue Jays traded Travis Darno, Wilmer Becerra, John Buck, Noah Syndergaard to the New York Mets for R.A. Dickey, Mike Nikias, and Josh Tholey. R.A. Dickey, an excellent starting pitcher, spent his last three seasons with the Mets. At his last season in 2012, Dickey had a 20 wins and 6 loss record, and 2.73 ERA, 5 complete games, 3 shutouts, 233 innings pitched and 2 thirds, and 230 strikeouts in 33 starts. Noah Syndergaard and Travis Darno were Toronto Blue Jays prospects at the time. Darno came from the Roy Halladay trade. Once the deal is made, R.A. Dickey, while still effective as a Blue Jays pitcher, has regressed due to age. In four years, he had a 49 wins and 52 lost record with a 4.05 ERA. With the Mets, Travis Darno, an average player, was injury prone. He hit for 242 in seven years and the Mets released him at the beginning of the 2019 season. What made the trade worse for Toronto is the excellent performance of Noah Syndergaard with the Mets. Since 2015, he held a 47 wins 31 loss record with a 3.31 ERA. Unfortunately, due to Tommy John's surgery, Syndergaard missed the entire 2020 season. I expect to see Noah Syndergaard emerging as the New York Mets version of John Smoltz. If this is the case, this will be embarrassing for the Blue Jays. In 2013, the Baltimore Orioles traded Jake Arrieta, Pedro Strop, and Cash to the Chicago Cubs for Steve Clevenger and Scott Feldman. In Baltimore, Jake Arrieta was a struggling starting pitcher. His ERA is always at 4 and over. Pedro Strop, who is a good reliever, also had a bad season at the time of the trade. He had a 7.25 ERA. As for Scott Feldman, he had a good season with the Cubs, having a 7 wins and 6 loss record with a 3.46 ERA. Once the swap is made, Feldman finished the year with a 5-6 record with a 4.27 ERA. While his combined 12-12 win-loss record and 3.86 era is okay, the fact is that Feldman's performance with the Orioles is much more worse than with the Cubs. Meanwhile, Jake Arrieta and Pedro Strop both saved their season and both won the World Series in 2016. As Arrieta became the pitcher the Orioles wanted him to be. In 2015, he won the Cy Young Award after having a 22 wins and 6 loss record with a 1.77 ERA and 33 starts. As for Strop, 
with the exception of the 2019 season, his ERA is always below 3. Today, Arietta and Strop are still active. Not Scott Feldman, nor backup catcher Steve Clevenger. In 2014, the Oakland Athletics traded Josh Donaldson to the Toronto Blue Jays for Franklin Barreto, Kendall Graveman, Brett Laurie, and Sean Nolan. Before the transaction, Josh Donaldson was already a powerful hitter playing half a year in the Oakland Coliseum, a pitcher-friendly stadium. At his first season with Toronto in 2015, he reached a career high in runs with 122, hits with 184, doubles with 41, home runs with 41, runs batted in with 123, total bases with 352, and sacrifice flies with 10. He won the National League MVP award and the Silver Slugger award. He helped the Blue Jays make the playoffs for the first time since 1993. While the bringer of rain still continued to hit 30 homers and drove 90 runs per season, he never had a season like that. In 2016, he did the same thing with the Jays with inferior stats. He won his Silver Slugger award. We can say the same thing for Brett Laurie a Canadian who play at third base like Donaldson. In 2015, he reached a career high in hits with 146, doubles with 29, home runs with 16, runs batted in with 60, total bases with 229, and sacrifice flies with 4. He also had a 299 on base percentage, the lowest of his career. Laurie attempted to make a comeback with the Milwaukee Brewers in 2019. It was a total failure. He was released without playing a single game for them. The other players the ace got are not better. Franklin Barreto is a bench player. Kendall Graveman, now a reliever, was an average starting pitcher. He is still an average player. Finally, Sean Nolan was rushed to the major league prior to the trade. He had a 27 ERA in two innings and one third with the Jays. He only appeared in six games with Oakland and can get an ERA under five to save his own life. Good job Billy Bean. Moneyball doesn't work. In 2018, the Tampa Bay Rays traded Chris Archer to the Pittsburgh Pirates for Tyler Glasnow, Austin Meadows, and a player to be named later. Pittsburgh sent Shane Baz to Tampa Bay to complete the deal. With the Tampa Bay Rays, Chris Archer was once a good starting pitcher. So one day... At the middle of the season, the Pirates decided to acquire him. Unfortunately of the Bucks, Archer was ineffective. In three years with the team, Archer had a record of 6 wins and 12 loss with a 4.92 ERA. He missed the entire 2020 season due to a surgery for thoracic outlet syndrome. He later returned to Tampa Bay in 2021. Guess who are his new teammates? Tyler Glasnow and Austin Meadows. Oops. You know a trade is bad when a player come back to his former team shortly after it. So the Pirates got robbed by the Rays. Plain and simple. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to comment too. Have a nice day.